I'm Andrew Jenkins. I teach 8th grade reading at Liberty Middle School. My name is Michael Stanley. I'm the librarian at Liberty Middle School. And I get to share with you our, our project about Breakout, EDU, and Utopias. Um, well, we had read Utopian books uh, for the unit. And I was trying to think of unique ways, you know, a lot of people really uh, create their own utopia at the end and that's their final project. I didn't want to really do that and I, because I've done it before and I was looking for something new. And uh, Dr. Stanley, our librarian, told me about our breakout kits and I was thinking about how we could incorporate those into um, the project. Think about how could kids come up with concepts of utopia and reflect those in the tasks that they had um, people do to, when they played their games in the resources that they used, and it just kind of snowballed from there, and we came up with our project. Breakout kits have been around at our school for at least a year, and I've done some playing with them with different teachers. Uh, last year, uh, we were trying out a lot of the pre-made games that were available on the Breakout website and doing things that kind of went along with what they were learning in the class. Uh, but this year, we really wanted to take a step forward and get kids excited about making their own games, you know, and taking it one step and like actually authoring their own games to show their learning. And you know, this year we built a project and that's what we just finished up. I think they really liked it. Yeah. When they played the games for the first time, they were really getting into it and the solving of the clues. And I think they just like doing different things as well. Um, you know, it, it's fun for them to be able to create their own thing, but you know, they've done probably dozens of things in their, their educational careers where they've come up with fantasy lands or, or things like that. But I think it was a, a much different style of thinking for them than they're used to. Not only did it have to reflect utopian ideas, but they had to come up with creative enough clues that people who were playing the game couldn't just solve right away. So it hit a lot of different um, skills and intelligences that we don't normally get to hit um, with a lot of projects. So I was excited about it and so were they. Uh, my SLO project for this year really focuses on student engagement through doing more makerspace and hands-on activities in the library. And so we're looking at um, how the kids interact with like, a different instructional strategy than they might in a, in a typical classroom. And so um, it was really fun with the breakout kids because you know when the kids are excited. When they get a lock, you can hear the cheers throughout the entire room. And you know, there's a big sense of accomplishment. They love opening it up. It's really satisfying to like yank the lock off the kit. And that's, uh, you, you can see that again and again as the kids were working on the project. So I know that it, it got, it was successful in that regard, you know, grabbing their attention. Um, Mr. Jenkins uh, and I, what we did first, we felt it was really important to ground the students in an experience of a breakout. So he brought his classes to the library and we had uh, picked like a, a pre-made uh, existing game from the website and the kids just tried it out. We uh, tried to draw their attention to how the clues worked, which ones their favorite kinds of locks and, and what they could use in their own games. And then once they had that kind of grounding experience, we um, challenged them to create their own. And so Mr. Jenkins put them into groups. They had about uh, three or four days in the classroom to kind of work out the kinks of their plan and really put together their own clues and, and things for the groups. And then they came back to the library, you know, about a week after that first experience and different groups in the class got to take turns playing each other's games. It was a lot of fun for them. It was really fun to see the kids work and, and get engaged in their own creations. But uh, we really wanted to have the kids learn and focus on like the elements of the utopian books that they were learning. And uh, sometimes some groups were more successful with that aspect of the project than others. They had great clues, but it may not necessarily reflect exactly what they were learning about the genre. And so um, we have a couple ideas about how we would re, um, revamp the project and kind of focus again so we can get that learning really amped up for the next go round if we do this again. I like the uniqueness of it. Um, I, I liked getting to see the kids get really into it and come up with creative things. I don't think we had as much time as I should have put into it for the kids to come up with you know, a more unified theme. Um, I also think that um, you know, we could have had the kids do a little more micro. Instead of creating a whole game as a small group, we could have created one game as a class and each kid, each group of kids is responsible for one component of the utopia that they notice. And then you get some of that depth um, for each kid that maybe we didn't get as much as I would have liked to this time around. Everyone read a book and it was about a utopian society 
and then he taught us about the different aspects of a utopian society and then we had to take all of the aspects and what we read in the book and we had to use it to make lock combos and clues. So we can make like a breakout game. Yeah, so they tried to get into the box. Something difficult in the project was not just like incorporating things in the book, but having the overall theme as a dystopia. So we couldn't really put like um, clues as like go into page five and look for like a word. It had to be harder than that. Yeah, and then like how you had to like incorporate all three books instead of just using one because everybody read different books and you had to use the overall theme to come up with the clues. I thought the hardest part was making the clues easy but not hard. Like you had to make it hard but not hard. I think that if we were able to have like more resources and have a little bit more time to elaborate on things that would be more fun. And I kind of felt like we only had the last day of coming up with our clues to actually see the locks and how we were going to use them. And maybe like a few more days incorporating that into our clues would work a little bit better. If we had more time to set it up, like instead of the teacher setting it up, that would be I think that it was really great that we had a critical think more than a traditional project because we also had to make it so that it wasn't too obvious or it wasn't too easy for them to break out. And then you like got to incorporate other types of things into your clues to make them harder or more complex. I like that we were able to take what we were learning in class and turn it into a game, but it was better than a test. Well, it was like more of a game and it wasn't a test or quiz or some sort of writing assignment and it was actually kind of fun.